experience. Yeah, so it, was, it was awesome. It was incredible. Yeah, it was brilliant. The bands on the tour were fantastic. We loved them. They kind of, I believe, they quite liked us. Yeah. And, you know, everywhere. we were told that never to meet your idols, and we did, and they were cool. Yeah. <laughs> so it was like, hooray. You know, we were, we were like really worried about meeting like Dickie Barrett yeah. and, you know, and Toby from H2O. We thought they'd probably look down on us. But they, they were really, really nice guys. The guys from Lego. Yeah, they were cool. Yeah. Everybody was tremendous, you know. And like I say, all the all the reactions from everywhere we played was 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 fantastic. We we expected to get a bit of our time. We didn't get it. Well, the only place it was mildly difficult was in the UK. But then that, that embarrasses the UK more than anything. And, and yeah. some of those those fans. I think it's because we got a bigger like a bigger profile in the UK. So people will think we're the, like a sellout kind of band. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because we've actually sold some records. Just because you sell records doesn't mean you sold out. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I think they didn't realise so that they would, you know. There's an irony in it though as well yeah. because like the, the bands that the, these militant punks really liked, like H2O, ended up hating those types of fans for being so stupidly narrow-minded. You know what I mean? Oh, okay. And, you know, we, they, we won the respect of these bands rather than them for be throwing bottles and yeah. stuff like that. Oh, okay. So, But everywhere else, they were brilliant. The fans yeah. were awesome. So. We got to play with, like, m you know, Movie Life, one of the best bands yeah. to come out for a long time. Okay. And, you know. Is it also in the UK, the reactions is because of your from Rails or is, is that narrow-minded? No, you I just from because we've, we, we've sold records, you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, so if, we, if, if, you, if you're a small band it. and you play little clubs and you, you're like <coughs> a secret... Uh, the people like you but if you're big and you're publicised I mean we worked damn hard for a year and a half before the media even grabbed a hold of us yeah. we toured every gig and for a year and a half before we even got in any magazines yeah. do you know what I mean we were nothing and then one day we got we got on the cover of NME yeah. and then from then on we've been sellouts yeah, you know everybody. it's like well we worked really hard you know we deserved a cover we deserved you know yeah, everybody we, thinks that's when we started you know what I mean we've come along we're in every magazine we're on the no. front of everything and therefore we're big sellouts mm -hmm. it's like well no because if you do your homework, you find out we were doing this. Yeah. You know, what even I mean? bands like working hard. yeah, even bands like Pat Roach worked like for five years before they were overnight successes. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know. So we just taking a bit of a backlash in the UK because they're comparing us to like Pretty Boy, you know, new metal. They're trying to say we're a boy band and we manufactured. How's the scene there in Cardiff? Is it? Uh, <laughs> <little bit. laughs> <laughs> there yes. wasn't really a scene. Was there? No, we started the scene. Yeah. Basically, yeah. do you know what I mean? There was a couple of couple of us and a few other bands like Douglas and Shooting Goon who were into like punk, mm -hmm. and we'd we'd put on shows yeah. and we'd you know we'd we'd like get in contact with like stamping ground and snapcase and stuff and try and play shows with those, you know, yeah. and we just put shows on. Nobody would book us because at the time every ball Wales wanted was another stereophonics. You know Oasis, what I mean? so because we, because we weren't playing Oasis kind of music, you know, nobody wanted to hear us. So we had to like hire the venues and book the shows, and it was really cool. I mean, that new band from uh, Benji Skindred is oh, also Skindred, from yeah, yeah. Double, yeah, they, yeah, they yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah they, they, we, we know them, they're good friends. We played, we did two it with them last year. Yeah, so, well, they hey, cool. Is it uh, an uplifting scene so, uh, and, and, and moving scene there? I, uh, I don't, but then I, I don't know. I don't know because we not back home very often yeah. now so it's no, really hard no. to keep you from, when you live in there you know what I mean but we've been touring now for two years practically non-stop so it's maybe it has in the last two years it's, it's kind of funny to see now though that like all all people are booking now in, in the places we try to get shows are Lost Province bands yeah. do you know what I mean they want bands who look like us you know and it's kind of it's just, so ironic yeah, do you know what I mean just you know a few bands have got signed and they sound exactly like us yeah. they've got signed just because they are us do you know what I mean and it's yeah. kind of freaky yeah. yeah, you taught a lot. I, I guess almost a year or more than a year. Three, two, three years we've been touring, yeah. uh, non-stop uh, with the record. Yeah. And yeah. yeah, we've been touring non-stop since probably last I don't know October two thousand, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah, we started and, as soon and, as the album came. And basically, okay. we've had about three days off since January this year. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So it's we've been always with you guys, with six guys in a bus. It's it's fun. Hate each other. It's fun. <laughs> no, it's, it's fun. <laughs> nah, it was you, you can't hate someone for a day, and then you just kind of go away. I mean, what was hard about going around the world on a, on an endless holiday with your best friends? It's yeah. brilliant. I mean, if we were to slam together because we were like musicians and our like personalities were going to clash, but because we were friends and we grew up anyway together, it was like you know we know where our we limitations are. We waited for each other to be able to play do you know what I mean yeah. it's like oh you know he can't quite play well enough here or so, you know, someone else can't play quite well enough here so let's just wait until he can play and then he can join the band yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean that's how we did it you know because we were all best friends it wasn't like who's the best musician it was like who's the best friend it was just some guys in the, in the village who liked yeah. that it's, kind of music yeah. the only guys who did like yeah, yeah. 
We're passionate about it. Huh? Most of you guys are into different music. Your singer is into uh, Duran Duran. Yeah. Well, we, all, we, all, we, all, we all like, got, like we all, we're all threaded off each other. We all kind of respect the same kind of thing. Just like for a while, you know, I was really into like hip-hop and stuff. And then, you know, then Jamie kind of got into the hip-hop I was into. And then Ian Wood, you know, then I got into like the hardcore Mike was into. And we all... Basically, like the same kind of bands. Yeah, because we always like put it on. It's on the bus. We listen to it. It's like, hey, that's cool. Yeah. Or not? I mean, we we like good music, and that can be from any sort of, you know, any yeah. genre. And because we respect each other's opinion, you know, we try. We we, we give it a chance. You know, we give yeah, the music we, a chance. We've never been sort of bogged down by thinking, oh, we like metal. So metal's the only thing we can listen to because metal's cool. It's mm. always been like, you know, we went to see No Doubt yesterday. We'd love mm. No Doubt, you know, new album, some mm. of the stuff they're doing on that. And you know we'll we'll take anything on if Love it's the good Neptunes. then we we we, we yeah Jeremy yeah, yeah and that comes through in the music we're never gonna put like deliberate limitations on ourselves because something is cool or something isn't you know what I mean yeah. we put we well, we've well, never what been kind of bands do you like in the, in your genre the rock genre so um, Deftones Deftones is cool you know but anything from like Dillinger Estate Plan to Glass Jaw to Converge to Bangle Thrice yeah Thrice are awesome Movie Life again you know like, going way back to like Anthrax and I made in Germany. You know I mean? uh, basically, any major band is probably we've listened to. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because Skid Row, Helmet. <laughs> yeah, Helmet, Helmet were good. Yeah, you know. Okay, because you hear it, uh, it's a, it's a killer album, and you hear the, the the various genres. You hear it in your music. Yeah. Because I hear some police. You got the, the with the choirs, uh, the hip hop, some jazz. Oh, yeah. How do your songs uh, evolve? We, we just, just like jamming them. Yeah, we just we just jam stuff, and we might jam like a jazzy section. We say let's try that on the end of that, and it, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Basically, it's just we just chuck everything against the wall and see what happens. You know, and yeah. bring them together, play them, and just play them over and over and over until they they feel good and they work. Yeah, together. And if we look at each other, and we're all smiling. We know it works. And if we yeah. all look at each other, going, <laughs> we just yeah. put it aside for a bit and yeah. come back to it another time. Like. How's your role uh, as a, as a DJ? Yeah, well, I, and I've never, I mean, I played bass guitar before, the, but I was in the band anyway, and I was never, like, stuck in my ways when it came to DJs, you know, I was, was like a, vi- a pure vinylist. I was, you know, I, I saw my, the instrument um, be more like a, a guitar or a bass guitar, you know what I mean? So when I joined the band, it was like, I try and, you know, adopt a different angle as opposed to doing this. So we're going away from the whole DJing thing now anyway, you know what I mean? And using more sort of uh, sounds that sort of... Um, Lay not not just like hundreds of thousands on top of the music, kind of more integral within the sounds and yeah. complement the guitars and the riffs. So it's going to be, I think, on the new album a lot more in the way of sort of keyboard work and samples as opposed to just going wicky wicky whack whack. Yeah, we, just, we make up a lot of the sounds. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Just, yeah. yeah, we just bring him on the CD. He's got like a CD DJ instead of vinyl, which is a lot better for us. Yeah, it works really good. I mean, like I say, I'm not like. Such a purist vinylist. Yeah. I don't see myself as a DJ, tell the truth. I'm not interested in putting records back to back. I've never been in like a club environment, you know what I mean? I, I want to treat it like an instrument. I've got no real role models either to go on, so everything I do is kind of like off my own back, you know what I mean? So I've, in a sense, got no limitations. And, you know, being just a squishy scratch DJ isn't, isn't really mm-hmm. of any benefit to my band at all. Being able to beat juggles, like, what well, yeah. use is that to our music? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? Us. Yeah. So I've got to produce stuff that has got to complement the music, you know what I mean? Okay. And, like, the next album, hopefully, I'll do that. But do you do all right material on the road, or...? Is no, we try to. It's, yeah. it's really hard. Especially yeah. when you go in from, like, short tour to short tour, you never get settled, but, like, Maybe hopefully on Ozfest we'll be able to do something. Yeah, we'll, like Ozfest will be okay. We, we just got, like, a, you know, a four-track machine the other day. We haven't been able to use our NIST, but there's no room to do it. So when we're in Oz Fest, we'll do that. Yeah. Yeah, so. Do you use Pro Tools? You've got no. some bands who use Pro Tools. No. We try to keep everything organic. You know, We don't use click tracks. We don't, we don't ever want to be playing to a dat. Do you know what I mean? I think that's the ultimate fake. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I think you might as well just go on a mime if you're going to do that. Exactly. I, I just don't think it's that cool. Did you expect this kind of success? Because no. you don't. <laughs> no, no. We sold we sell a thousand if, if we were lucky. Yeah. A thousand and uh, three thousand if we were really, really the lucky. The only reason we got the album done was to sell it. You just give us something to sell at the back of the, the minibus yeah. we want, so we that want, we could we afford again, to tour. We wanted to get in crying, basically. Do you know what I mean? Just yeah. to kind of say, look, we're a band, you know, and, you know, take us seriously. We're not just, you know, we want to try and get a foot on the ladder. And that's all it was, to get a foot on the ladder. And we, we didn't. Thought. And yeah, <laughs> we would have thought, you know, we'd, on, yeah. we'd up another few rungs and yeah, higher so. than we should have been.